Hi everybody, it's Miss Julia. Um, today uh, for our project, I thought I would do some crocuses. I found some out in my garden, so I brought them into my studio and we're just gonna use them as our little model and we're gonna create a picture around it. Obviously, I'm not gonna put the little egg cup in. So I'm just gonna put it up here so I can see it and I'm gonna take one out of here so that I can paint it and then we'll get started. We're gonna start with a sketch. I'm gonna use a 2H pencil. I'm gonna draw it a little bit dark just so that you're able to see it on the video better, but you don't have to draw it quite as dark as I'm doing it. So a crocus is like a thin tulip. So they have little tiny jut outs and they almost have a little tube looking end on them like this. And then the green would start in here. So. In art, it's sometimes good to do odd numbers. So we're gonna do three crocuses. And I'm gonna add that third one. This one I'm gonna make it a little more open. And show a bit of the center. Now, in the spring, you have leftover leaves. So I'm just giving the impression of fall leaves that are just kind of still on the ground and the crocuses are coming up. I'm gonna add in a few rocks. They do like to nestle in rocks. So I'm gonna add a few little rocks in here. A few more dry leaves, a hint of grass. Now the leaves for a crocus look like grass. They're tall, thin, and we're just gonna draw in a few, but then the rest will paint in. Back in the distance, I'm gonna draw a few more of these little oval shapes to give the impression of other crocuses in the distance. Again, I'm just gonna keep it a few like this without getting into great detail, even hint a stem. All right, so there's our sketch. Now I'm gonna do what's called a wet on wet wash. I'm gonna prop up the end of my board because I'm working on a drafting table. I'm just gonna take this board and lift it until my paper's level. I'm gonna take my wash brush. I'm just gonna take a little bit of water and I'm gonna leave the heads of my flowers dry everything else doesn't matter. So I'm just doing the background. I'm going around these rocks in the foreground and I'm just giving my background a nice shine. There we go. Just kind of work my way into those flowers. So you don't want to develop any puddles. If you do, you don't want to use any Kleenex on your wash because it absorbs up too much moisture and it mars your paper a bit and you'll get funny marks on your paper. If you get too much, dry your brush off and absorb up any puddles with your brush, like a little mop. Never use Kleenex on your wash. You can use Kleenex to take, or cheesecloth, sometimes I use cheese, cheesecloth, then you can dry off your tape. What happens is you get puddles of, when you're shoving your water around, you get puddles on your tape and it doubles back and sometimes affects your wash. So I'm gonna use a yellow ochre. I know you guys are at home and you're at the mercy of what you have at home. So any yellow would work because um, it's the color opposite to purple. And the crocuses have a purple shade, so the yellow is gonna make that color kind of pop. So I'm just doing more of a vignette style where I'm not painting to the edge. I'm just doing this quick in here. And I'm gonna take some of this yellow ochre that's not wet onto the paper that is where the leaves are. It's drier, so it's gonna have a little more of a dry look to it. Okay. All right. 
Now I'm going to take a little bit of orange, just a little bit of orange. If you don't have orange paint, this is cadmium red light. You can use um, just a little red paint, mix it with your yellow ochre on the painting and it'll turn orange just to give it a bit of a glow. All right, now I'm gonna add a little of that orange and start my rocks. I'm gonna use a, a little bit of pink as well into my rocks just to give them a little color. Okay, I'm developing a little puddle, so I'm gonna absorb that up. Take a little, I'm gonna take a little ultramarine blue. I want the bottom of the rock to be my coolest part of the rock. Cool as in the temperature, not that it's really cool. I'm making it the temperature. <laughs> So I'm going to tap the bottom of my rock and keep the top of the rock warm. Okay, so it's already starting to look like a rock. Now, while those rocks are wet, and you want to do it while it's um, while it's wet, but not too soaked. Right now, it might be slightly too wet. I'm going to wait a few seconds. Um, see how I can see there's a bit of puddling going on here. I want to wait till it just starts to turn matte and then I can use a little salt. I'm going to take a, a bit of burnt sienna now and just kind of add it into my leaves. Just random. I'm going to leave some of that yellow ochre and I'm going to enhance this. Right now I'm just kind of establishing what's a rock and what's a leaf. There we go. Now before my background has a chance to dry too much, I'm going to take a tiny bit of pink and just kind of dampen the top of these crocuses first with pink, just these little guys in the background. Then I'm going to take a little of my violet. You can make a purple by mixing the ultramarine blue with your pink. And I'm just going to notice how these ones bleed a little. This one, these ones are going to be like out of focus. They're not super noticeable back there. I'm going to take a touch of green and I'm just going to continue a stem, a little bit of the leaves. And they're small, short little flowers. They're not very tall, so don't make big long stems on them. Just give them like a little cluster in the back. There we go. And I'm just fading my way forward. Now I could put a few out of focus leaves to get started in here. I'm just using a medium round brush right now. What's nice about a medium round brush is you can start fat at the bottom and lift up on your brush and make it thin. If you use a little tiny brush for the whole thing, you don't have that ability to do that. Your brush, you're limited to just that point and you have to keep going back over things. Sometimes it's better to use a bigger brush. So they do have a lot of little spiky leaves. So we're just kind of doing the out of focus ones right now. So you see how it's bleeding and blurring a little bit? It's kind of pretty. You don't want it all to be stiff. So you just want the impression. Fade off the page. I love vignettes. I'm a fan of vignettes. I just think they're interesting. It's like a little moment in time that you're zooming in on and you're not worried about the rest of it. Okay, so now you'll notice that my, I'm just going to scoop up those little puddles. I want to leave that little jagged edge. I just think it's kind of interesting for the vignette. You don't want a perfect circle. You want, you know, little, little jut outs like that. I'm going to take a tiny bit of salt, a little pinch of salt. Now, we don't want to clump it on there. I want you to wiggle it between your fingers and let it naturally fall. And you're just sprinkling your rocks with salt. Wherever the salt lands, 
it's going to create, it's going to absorb up the paint near it and it's going to create a kind of a marble effect on your rock. So I'm going to just tap a little more shadow with my blue right at the, where the transition between the two rocks is. And I do have a brush that has a palette knife end on it. Just like that rock or the uh, scoring we did with the nail the other day, you can do that with this palette knife end just to keep the edge of your rock clean and you can kind of see where the one rock ends and the next rock starts. Now, in the meantime, up here has started to dry a bit. So now we can go in and we can start painting in our um, flowers. So they're a darker purple at the top and they're a lighter purple as you get closer to the base of the bud. Not the greatest brush. There we go. So I'm going to start at the top and putting the color directly on without wetting it. Then what I want to do, I don't want to put it on while it's wet because then it's going to bleed in, it's going to bleed into your background. I want to kind of have a little bit of control. But now I'm going to rinse my brush. I don't want to do all the flowers. I'm just going to do one. I'm just going to take a damp, I'm actually drying my brush off a little bit. Just a damp brush and you're pulling it down so that it, you can keep the white at the base of the bud. You can hint a little purple in there. All right, I'm going to do this little guy, starting at the top. I'm going to work my way into the spacing of the two petals. It's almost like a lack of paint, not a lot of paint. That's the nice thing about watercolors. You don't need a ton of color. It's more pigment than water. Start at the top. Rinse my brush, dry it off, feather, and you want to feather that down before it has a, ch a chance to dry as a stiff edge. Okay, now these little guys in the background have had a chance to set. So I'm just going to add a few little touches of dark back here too, but leave some of the blurry edges, like the flowers are opening back there. You don't want them too noticeable. Now, the other thing you can do with a picture like this so you take a loaded brush with a bit of moisture on the brush and even while the paper is still a little damp and you can flick up add a few little splatters and it just gives the picture movement it just has it's kind of fun and it gives the picture movement you can pick and choose the ones you want to keep you can blot up with your brush the ones you want to enhance or, or lighten darken there we go now, I'm going to go back now to my foreground to where my leaves are. Go in with a little more burnt sienna and a little burnt umber. And I'm just going to add a few little edges on some of these leaves. There we go. I want to show off my rocks, so I'm putting some nice dark there. Again, we don't need to get into great detail with this. Giving the impression is always good. Usually wherever you have a pencil line is where you want to add a little color. That way you don't see your pencil lines anymore and the drawing disappears and your painting comes forward. All right. So uh, this is enough to get you started and you guys can go ahead and give this a try. Feel free to share it on Facebook with each other and enjoy.